Hello, today we are going to learn how to find the inverse element of any given circle, which can be another circle or sometimes a line with respect to a reference circle. The inversion in a circle is a transformation which transforms one point A into its inverse point A prime, whose distances from the origin O equal the square of the radius of the circle which defines the inversion and satisfies the equation R squared is equal to OA times O prime, OA prime. So in our video today, we are going to learn how to draw the inverse of five different given circles shown in blue, covering all the different inversions of circle options. The first one we will name circumference one. It is located outside the reference circle and the reference circle is named CPD. The second one, C2, is located inside the reference circle and it is circumference doesn't pass through the origin of the reference circle. The third one, circumference three, intersects with the reference circle and also its circumference doesn't pass through the origin O of the reference circle. The fourth one, C4, is located inside the reference circle and its circumference does pass through the origin O of the reference circle. And the fifth one, C5, intersects with the reference circle and its circumference does pass through the origin O of the reference circle. So let's start with circumference number one, which is located outside the reference circle. The inverse circle of circumference one is another circle, circumference one prime, which is going to be located inside the reference circle and its center point O1 prime is going to be located on the line O, O1. So the first step is to join the origins O and O1 and elongate it as shown and we will call this line R. This line R intersects with the circumference C1 at two points A and B, which can be seen here highlighted in red dots. So the next step is to work out the inverse points of these two points A and B. So let's start with point A. The first step is to work out the perpendicular bisector of the line segment OA. So to do this, setting the compass slightly longer than half the radius OA, we're going to describe, and setting the compass on O, we're going to describe an arc above and below the line, as can be seen here. And now with the same radius, and setting the compass on point A, we describe another two arcs above and below the line, intersecting the previous two arcs. And now we're going to draw a line joining these two intersections, which is the perpendicular bisector. And where this line cuts the line segment OA, we obtain the midpoint. So now setting the compass on this midpoint and with a radius midpoint O, we draw a circle which cuts the reference circle at two points, which we will call point one and point two. The next step is to join points one and two. And where this line cuts the line OA, we obtain a new point A prime, which is the inverse point of point A. So now we are going to repeat the same process with point B to try and find point B prime. So we will work out the perpendicular bisector of the line segment BO. And to do this, we will follow the same process setting the compass to a radius slightly longer than the line segment BO. We describe an arc above and below the line, as can be seen here. And now with the same radius and the compass set on point B, we describe two more arcs, cutting our previously drawn arcs to form two intersections.
And now we will draw a line joining these two intersections and find the midpoint of the line BO. So now setting the compass on this new midpoint and with a radius midpoint O, we draw a circle which cuts the reference circle at two points, which we will call point three and point four, as can be seen here. The next step is to join points three and four and where this line cuts the line segment OB, we obtain a new point B prime, which is the inverse point of the point B. So the line segment A prime B prime is the diameter of the inverse circle of C1. So the next step is to find the midpoint of this line segment A prime B prime to do this, we have to construct the perpendicular bisector of A prime B prime. So again, setting our compass on A prime and with a radius slightly longer than half the distance A prime B prime, we scribe an arc above and below the line. And now with the same radius and setting our compass on B prime, we scribe another two arcs, cutting our previously drawn arcs, creating two new intersections. And finally, we will join these two intersecting points to find the midpoint of B prime, A prime, which we will call O1 prime. And this is also the center point of the circumference C1 prime, which is the inverse circle of C1. We show it here in a thicker red line. As you can see here in the green, the tangent lines of C1 and C1 prime converge on the origin O of the reference circle, as can be seen here. This is a property of inverse circles, which many teachers use to check if they have been drawn precisely or not. Okay, so let's continue with the circle number two, circumference two, which is located inside the reference circle and its circumference doesn't pass through the origin of the reference circle. The inverse circle of C2 is another circle, which we will call C2 prime, which is going to be located outside the reference circle and its center point O2 prime is going to be located on the elongation of the line segment O, O2. So the first step is to join the origins O and O2 and elongate it as shown here. And we will call this line S. This line S intersects with the circumference C2 at two new points, which we call C and D, highlighted here in red dots. So the next step is to work out the inverse points of these two points C and D. So let's start by working out the inverse point of C. Now we are going to draw a perpendicular line to the lines from point C until it cuts the circumference of the reference circle at a new point, which we will call three. And now we join the origin O with the new point three. From the new radius O3, we draw a perpendicular line until it cuts our previously elongated line S at a new point, which we will call C prime. And this is the inverse of the point C. So now we are going to repeat the same process with point D. The next step is to draw a perpendicular line to line S from point D until it cuts the circumference of the reference circle at a new point, which we will call point four. And now we join the origin O with this new point four 
from the new radius line segment O4, we draw a perpendicular line until it cuts our previously elongated line S at a new point, which we will call D prime. And this is the inverse of the point D. So the line segment C prime D prime is the diameter of the inverse circle of C2. So the next step is to find the midpoint of this line segment C prime D prime. To do this, we have to construct the perpendicular bisector of C prime D prime. So to do this, we set our compass slightly longer than half the radius of C prime D prime, and we scribe an arc to the left and to the right as shown here. And now with the same radius and setting our compass on D prime, we scribe another two arcs intersecting our previously drawn arcs. And now we will join these two intersections with a line finding the midpoint of C prime D prime, which we will call O2 prime. And this is also the center point of the circumference to C2 prime, which is the inverse circle of C2. We show it here in a thicker red line. As you can see here in green, the tangent lines of C2 and C2 prime converge on the origin O of the reference circle, as can be seen here. Okay, let's continue with circle number three. Circumference three, which intersects the reference circle at two points, five and six. And its circumference doesn't pass through the origin O of the reference circle. The inverse circle of circumference three is another circle, which we will call circumference C three prime, which also intersects the reference circle at the same intersection points, five and six and its center point O3 prime is going to be located on the elongation of the line segment O03. So the first step is to join origins O and O3 and elongate it as shown, and we will call this line T. This line T intersects with the circumference of circumference three at a new point E highlighted here with a red dot. So the next step is to work out the inverse point of this point E. To do this, we are going to draw a perpendicular line to the line T from point E until it cuts the circumference of the reference circle at a new point, which we will call point seven. And now we join the origin O with the new point seven and from the new point seven, we draw a perpendicular line until it cuts our previously elongated line T at a new point, which we will call E prime. And this is the inverse of the point E. Now we are going to join point six and E prime. The inverse circle C three prime of the given circle C three passes through the points six and five and E prime. So, so to find the center point O3 prime of this circle, we have to work out the perpendicular bisector of the line segment E prime six. So to do this, setting our compass on point six and with a radius slightly longer than half the, the length of the line segment E prime six, we draw an arc above and below the line as shown here. And now with the same radius and setting the compass on the point E prime, we draw another two arcs intersecting our previously drawn arcs. So now we will join these two intersections, which is the perpendicular bisector, which cuts the line T at a point we are looking for, which is O3 prime which is the center point of the circle C3 prime, which has a radius O3 prime E prime. And now we will draw it here in a thicker red line, as can be seen here in the video. As you can see here in green, the tangent lines converge on the origin O of the reference circle, as can be seen here. 
Okay, so let's continue with circle number four, circumference four, which is located inside the reference circle and its circumference passes through the origin O of the reference circle. The inverse circle of C4 is going to be a straight line, C4 prime, which has to be perpendicular to the line U, which passes through center points O and O4. So the first step is to draw this line U joining origins O and O4 and elongate it as shown here. This line U intersects with the circumference uh, C4 at a new point, which we will call F, highlighted here in a red dot. So the next step is to work out the inverse point of this point F. To do this, we are going to draw a perpendicular line to the line U from the point F until it cuts the circumference of the reference circle at a new point, which we will call point 8. And now we join the origin O with the new point 8. From the new point 8, we draw a perpendicular line until it cuts our previously elongated line U at a new point, which we will call F prime. And this is the inverse of the point F. The inverse of the circumference C4 is a perpendicular line to the line U passing through point F prime. We will draw it in a thicker red line and call it C4 prime, as shown here in the video. And finally, we will draw the final circle, which we will call circumference 5, which intersects the reference circle and passes through its origin O. The inverse C5 prime of this circle C5 is a straight line which passes through the intersections points 9 and 10, highlighted here in red dots. So we only have to join these points in a thicker red line as shown. So here you have covered all the possibilities to work out the inverse elements of any given circle. Mainly they are circles and sometimes, as we've seen in the last two examples, they are lines. So I hope this video has helped you. Please press like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you would like to, you can always support us by pressing the super thanks button. Until the next video, thank you very much.